Excuse me, little dog. Alright, guys. Oh, Jesus, what a day. <laughs> so it is now an exciting winter Saturday night here in the collapse of everything where me and my uh, <laughs> my little amazingly still alive that I have not killed him myself, little dog. Hanging out inside Bugs in a Jar Farm because all, every one of our Tiny houses is rented so I can finally get to the rant I was planning to get to before all of this shit blew up with his dog disappearing. He was under the bed is where he was for close to three hours while we were tearing the place apart, getting his beauty sleep. So anyway, I guess I can finally get to this rambling rant that I was thinking about uh, trying to recollect my thoughts here and oh yeah it is uh, it is an exciting Saturday night October 21st 2023 and uh, so I cannot find it anywhere but I actually found about a three paragraph article on somewhere on the mainstream media where some Doomer chick had actually broken through to the mainstream media pointing out uh, th that she's figured out how doomed we are and more and more she's having conversations just like I have with my sister frequently and where she gets into her doom mongering and her friends look at her, roll their eyes, and say, I get it. We're doomed. There's nothing we're going to do about it. They seem to have reached full acceptance of the fact that the human race and the planet, this global industrial civilization, whatever, is doomed. And then as she says they just change the subject and go right on about their lives and never mention it. And uh, I don't really know what the point of her little article was except just pointing out, I guess, that more and more people that she's meeting, uh, kind of like that 22-year-old Amazon delivery driver that Sandy and I met a couple of days ago. Uh, you know, I'm terrified of having children. And then she gets in her Amazon delivery van and disappears in a cloud of fossil fuel smoke to deliver more uh, stuff from Amazon while she's terrified to have children. And I, I wonder how many people on her route she tells that to. And... Uh, and, you know, and, and, and I'm just thinking that I get up this morning going on, uh, you know, medium.com and, and, and just reading. It was a pretty good treasure trove of doom and gloom today, just over and over again. It's, it's always the same people, and then there's always one or two names and just over and over and over again, spelling out in 500 different ways that we're doomed, and there's not a damn thing we're going to do about it. I know, I, I learned nothing. There, there is not one piece of news in these medium.com. It's just more and more people writing the same shit over and over again, day after day after day, week after week, year after year. I'm not going to name any names. You can uh, you, you, you can go here in the Doomosphere. You can hear the same people talking the same shit. You heard my Manga Bay Roundup yesterday where I'm going to start picking six stories a week out of the 30. Six is enough. Uh, j j just these broken record... We're doomed. 
and there's not a damn thing we're going to do about it. Who and, and I'm wondering, who in the hell are all of these doomers writing this shit for? Who in the who in the hell am I talking to? You're, you're on a channel called Collapse Chronicles. It's the same folks. It maybe maybe each year, maybe ten or twelve people are just uh, opening. You know, young folks coming up. Maybe 10 or 12 people have never heard this shit before. Uh, there's nothing I'm accomplishing doing this and uh, with this doom scrolling. But here I sit. It's goddamn Saturday night, sitting here with my dog. Amazingly, I did not think I'd be sitting here with my dog. And what am I doing? I'm looking at all of this doom and gloom and... Uh, so here's this one from, uh, what's this fellow that I read, and uh, he's quite funny. If you haven't heard of this guy, if you're doom scrolling on medium.com, uh, I think this is Patrick Metzger. Uh, he's talking about being an old doomer on these dating sites. That he's, you I know, I think this, eating. what's that? call it doom feeding doom feeding feeding like repeating yeah doom feeding yeah so he's out there you, you know he's talking about you know internet dating uh, now that he is a 60 I guess he's 60 something doom and uh, so th this is like a, a conversation he, he can expect uh, pleasant woman my son is graduating from college this year. Me. AI is taking all the jobs, so I guess he'll be living at home. Pleasant woman. Silence. Me. Mind you, that'll give you help scavenging what with the food shortages from climate change. Pleasant woman. Stone silence. Me. The bird flu situation isn't looking good this year either. Pleasant woman. Sorry, I have to go do something else. And uh, Patrick was actually, uh, what did he say? Something like, <coughs> he's had like seven first dates. Uh, seven first dates. Uh, and, and is complaining about it. Uh, it, and, and I was left there in my comments. What was here? This was my comment to uh, to Patrick's story about being an old doomer trying to meet women on the internet. I finally decided to be honest right up front with my doomerism and my internet dating profiles. After bumbling through a few normie non-starters, I just wrote, and, and it's still out there, I am a doomer looking for my doomer chick forever. If you know what that means, you can find me here. And I put a link to my YouTube channel, Collapse Chronicles. I didn't even mention being abducted by space aliens for 22 years because that probably would have gotten some responses from some woman I met on a UFO in 1978. Not sure if this has anything to do with the fact that 2023 will no doubt mark the first year of my life that I have not had even one, not even one, first date with a female since I was 12 years old. And uh, so then after a little little doomer humor, uh, okay, let's just, let's just pick out a few. I'm, I'm just going to read the beginnings and the end of these. Here is Richard Lowenthal. Richard Lowenthal is a good guy. <clears throat> you know a society is far gone and collapsing when? Okay. Today, 
I had a deeply chilling realization. I'm, I'm sure today, uh, 10 years ago, a deeply chilling realization. Most Americans are still so caught up in their past vision or patriotic image of the United States that they have very little concept of what is truly happening now across the country. We have been spiraling downward toward total dysfunction and collapse for well over a decade. Yet, it seems most Americans are not grasping this reality. I also had an even more chilling thought. It's actually already over. This American experiment of ours, it is all over except the screaming, open hatred, violence, and the ugly final act. Yes, my observable evidence is below. As my title says, these are the visible signposts, the very the various ways you know for sure society is far gone and collapsing. And then he goes and, and has his list of, of reasons that nobody outside of the uh, Doomosphere is going to read, and he ends up with the end game intensifying collapse. I could go on. I yes, I could go on since I haven't even covered every serious problem we are facing, but I think I've made my point. Sadly, Americans today are living in la-la land and are still in major denial about what is really happening on the ground in our society. But the signs are all there right in front of us for all to see. These signs point to immense and increasing danger, and the sooner we start to wake up and admit what is happening here in the vaunted land of the free, the better off we will be. The better off we will be. Unless you're trying to meet a woman uh, on the internet. But this waking up process is currently slow to non-existent. Despite uh, that uh, Amazon delivery driver yesterday and what that woman was talking about, that more and more people are, are realizing this and they don't want to hear it and change the channel. So, who's right? But this waking up process is currently slow to non-existent. So my conclusion based on existing trends is that the U.S. is likely to disintegrate or collapse by 2028 to 2030 at the latest, and sooner than that, if the 24 election devolves into chaos and violence. The intense psychological and political undermining of our society and the grave damage already done to our public square and our election processes ensure that our society's function will continue to rapidly spiral downward. Short of a miraculous transformation and transfiguration, it appears that our society is doomed to collapse into vicious chaos. And soon, yep, how about, here is, I think this is a woman, B. Lorraine Smith. Is 
our civilization going to collapse. Do I think our civilization is going to collapse? Simply put, no. I don't think our civilization is going to collapse. I think it is collapsing already, right now. Yes, and then I like how she clarifies civilization. Uh, she doesn't talk so much about collapse. So what is this civilization when she is talking about our civilization collapsing? I have a lot of thoughts on the word civilization, including how brutally uncivilized it is, how a lot of what we consider desirable in modernity is an addiction-fueling illusion, etc. But I don't want to get too tangled up into that here. So, for the purposes of discussing the current collapse, I will consider our civilization to mean things like being able to go to the grocery store and getting a variety of foods any day of the week or being able to order practically anything online and expecting the financial transfer to pay for it will proceed without difficulty and then the item will be delivered within days. I would also include things like the education system as we know it today. The idea that once a human is more or less toilet trained, they go to one building or another to be given fairly templated instructions until they're in their teens or if wealthy or ambitious, their 20s, then with these instructions, I mean this education, they get the best paying job they can. They work in this job or a few jobs for as long as they can, earning as much money as they can until they retire or die. Maybe there is a pause in the job to have babies or due to job loss, but basically in our civilization, 99% of us work for pay or at least live with someone who works for pay until something stops us. In this civilization, success involves home ownership or at least private stuff ownership. Things like cars, fridges, sound systems, shoes, or even just money itself in the form of various assets. It involves owning as much as possible in your life and on into death by way of wills and estates. There are lots of other details. Uh, yep, yep, yep. That is the civilization that is collapsing. This civilization of ours replete with the things I just described is the one I believe is collapsing right now. Those things were considered normal when I was born in the early 1970s. They will not be considered normal when I die. If I live to my life expectancy, that civilization will have collapsed. And then, of course, we get to Alan Urban. And I'm pretty sure this is a repeat of uh, this giant essay he wrote last year that he's just bringing out again. Why civilization would collapse even without climate change. And uh, thank you, uh, Alan, 
for spelling out that we do not need climate change for this civilization to collapse. This civilization is collapsing just fine without climate change. I have noticed that average everyday climate activists often do not see the big picture. They are laser focused on climate change and believe that if we just stop burning fossil fuels and start using green energy, we can save the planet and modern civilization. The truth is that even if there were no climate change, our civilization would still be doomed. And to a, with a nod to Book Hermit, I think this is the Book Hermit philosophy, and the more time we waste trying to save it, meaning this civilization, the more damage we will do to the biosphere. It is time to give up on the idea of saving civilization and instead focus on saving as much of the natural world as possible. For those of you, for those who still believe we can continue with business as usual using green energy instead of fossil fuel energy, this article will be a wake-up call, and it could be very upsetting. I don't want to scare people, but it is important that we face reality so we can make better choices as we move forward. Yes, and then uh, Alan Urban, good Lord, starting off with exponent. Th these are reasons why we are doomed. Nothing to do with climate change. Exponential growth. Don't forget, overshoot, uh, breaking good. Lord, he goes through Earth overshoot day. All of this stuff. Uh, the limits to growth, dwindling resources. All of that has nothing to do uh, with climate change. Of course, topsoil, aquifers, and then he gets into fossil fuels and, and peak oil. Um, yep, yep, breaks all that down, E-R-O-I, uh, natural gas, meaning the uh, Haber-Bosch process, literally half of the global population is supported by synthetic nitrogen fertilizers without natural gas, crop yields will be cut in half. And then, of course, what about renewables? For years, the mainstream media has assured us that we are going to transition to renewables which will solve our energy problems. This is a pipe dream. Hmm. Do you think so? Then he goes on and on and on about why this is a pipe dream. Uh, good Lord, anybody who... Uh, doesn't uh, understand this. I wanted to read this one quote in this mammoth, uh, but uh, this thing is so big, it, it has just gotten, uh, it, it has just gotten loose, it, it's just gotten uh, lost in the mix. Uh, but what he was talking about, which is lost in here, good Lord, 
uh, is what uh, I was talking about with Tim Garrett uh, in my interview with him, and I am so sorry, I just can't find it here uh, in this unbelievable uh, but what he's talking about is uh, oh come on where is it I really wanted to uh, share this but anyway it's gone but what he was talking about is what uh, it, it, it is what Tim Garrett was talking about that uh, probably something about exponential growth that we are supposed to, you know, between now and 2040, pretty much use, when you understand exponential growth, we are going to literally eat as much of this planet in the next 20 years as we have eaten uh, for the past uh, however many hundred years. How, you know, it, once you understand exponential growth and whatnot and you see how many times the global economy has doubled, uh, that each time the global economy doubles, it goes like this, so we're sitting here now, and when the global economy doubles again, something's got to give. It can't do it. There cannot be a doubling of the global economy without the collapse uh, of uh, of the global economy, it's uh, it, it 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 it's impossible. It, it is a violation of the laws of physics for the global industrial economy to double again. Ain't gonna happen. But anyway, he has a link to all that. I bet you've heard it before. It ain't gonna happen, guys. It can't happen. What has happened, what is it, 17 times uh, or whatever since uh, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution? It can't happen again. We are going to collapse. Period. But I really didn't need to read anything except this article, this China bashing. China coal imports hit record high after surge in air conditioning use. This is this little article buried away in the mainstream me media. Millions of people turning on air conditioners have prompted China to import records amount of coal to support its electricity grid. China has imported 300 48 million metric tons of coal so far this year, which is already a record, and is on course to buy 470 million metric tons of the dirty fuel across 2023 as a whole. That represents a 60% a 60% surge in coal burning compared to 2022 and 44% more than the previous record annual import total of 327 million metric tons in 2023. The surge has been triggered by a spike in demand for electricity uh, power grid demand in China hit record levels over the summer um, as temperatures prompted more and more people to turn on air conditioning. Uh, they had a drought in the south, so hydropower availability went 
down and there is a lot of air conditioning use which has pushed up the coal consumption. China has invested hundreds of billions of dollars in renewable energy in recent years. However, hydropower generation slumped 9% in the first nine months of the year just as demand surged. So coal power generation rose by 6% over the same period. Um, Shanghai's power plant burned up to 800 tons of coal per hour to help uh, the city's residents keep cool in June. So here is uh, what China's coal use graph looks like. So that's, that's all you need to know, and they don't even mention India, which has more people than China now and is hotter than China. But don't worry. Don't think I'm going to leave you on such a depressing note. It's right here in the mainstream media. A solar shield tied to an asteroid could be, could be just what we need to cool Earth down. Yes. <coughs> a researcher has recently proposed that we could limit or reverse the effects of climate change by tethering a sun shield to a captured asteroid between us and the sun. Hmm. If we could just figure out how to do it, which is an incredibly long shot, the asteroid would serve as a counterweight to keep the sun shield in place so it doesn't blow off course. This, this is not the onion. Well, it's popular mechanics. It's right here in today's mainstream media. A solar shield tied to an asteroid could be just what we need. What we need is to keep our peckers in our pants and to not let our knickers down. But I realize I'm rambling and talking to myself and I need to go freshen my drink on this exciting Saturday night in the collapse with me and my dog. Bye guys.